I'm back with Emmy Award-winning reporter and news anchor Liz Collin. We're talking about her film, The Fall of Minneapolis. The website is thefallofminneapolis.com. Liz, Derek Chauvin gets convicted uh, and he's in prison. You were able to do an exclusive interview with uh, Chauvin. Talk a little bit about Chauvin himself, his demeanor, his, his feeling about all of this. What did you learn about him, not just in in everything you already knew, but in the one-on-one conversation with him? Yeah, you know, I'll be honest, I didn't know him, but before any of this happened um, and have had many conversations uh, with him over, over the course of, of you know, a, a year at this point. But but it is really remarkable how the media can turn someone into a complete monster. It's really uh, an incredible power that, that they have. And when you talk to Derek, it's almost like this is... This is the guy uh, that is, you know, the most racist cop cop in America. He's he's a small guy. He's actually kind of shy and, and timid. Um, you know, George Floyd clearly was a, a, a big a big guy, six six six, and and uh, Derek Chauvin like you know five seven and one hundred and forty pounds or something along along those lines. But but I will say that he's very you know by, by the book. Even to this day, he can really recite so much when it comes to police policy. He has a military background, um, almost robotic in a in a sense, I guess. Is how I um, d- describe him. So, uh, you know, he he's thankful that this story uh, has been put out there. But then, you know, nine days after we released the, the film, uh, it, you know, there's this horrific attack in, in this prison where he's been for 15 months uh, without any incident, and he's stabbed uh, 22 times. It's just, uh, just horrible. I mean, in some ways, isn't it even possible to view the stabbing as just an extension of that corrupt narrative. Because I saw a report where the guy who did it was like, oh yeah, you know, I mean, he was essentially giving us the BLM talking points as to why he was doing this. So it's almost like the narrative follows you even into prison. Yeah, and you know, we raised this FBI involvement in the film, and then out of nowhere, this guy who was a former FBI informant uh, did all of a sudden decides to, to do this. So I think there's just a lot of questions uh, that, that remain. It, Derek's lucky to have survived the attack. Uh, honestly, he was making copies the day after Thanksgiving in the library um, when he was attacked from behind by this guy and never had any incident. He knew of him, but you know, didn't have any inter- interaction with him before. Um, so yeah, you're right. I mean, I, and I think that's the point of all, all of this is, is are we okay with this, the, the government and the media manipulating these messages? And here we are three years later having to, to deal with, with all the consequences of, of these lies. I mean, Liz, I think part of what is so disheartening about all this is that even when facts come out, there appears to be no media reassessment. We saw this with Russia collusion. Uh, You know, every time you bring it up, let's say I see it on CNN, the reporters always look a little uncomfortable, but they'll never say, oh, yeah, you know what? We did put out that false narrative for two years. We're really sorry because we we did believe it at the time, even though we now know it was bogus. Nothing like that. And similarly here, I bet, you, you know, you have a film. It has this new information. You have the medical report. You've put all the facts together. Uh, but I mean, I don't think you or I could be waiting for any apologies to come coming from the people, whether local or national, who participated in this propagandistic false narrative. Yeah, you have, I think, more than five million people now who've watched the fall of Minneapolis in, in barely a month. So it's been it's been remarkable and, and incredible. Um, but you need somebody to sort of do something. You can put this put this information out there. Uh, but even in that five million, you know, I'm lucky enough to be doing an interview with with someone like yourself. No mainstream media ha- has called me for an interview yet. I know you're you're not surprised at <laughs> anyone. But but that's uh, that's really the, the problem here. There seems to be this line in the sand and and we're all, you know, worse off uh, for it. What about the courts, Liz? Is it the case that unfortunately when you are convicted at the local level, even though you appeal that the appellate courts don't revisit the facts of the case and kind of look to see whether the jury got it right, they simply look for points of law. Is it the case that ultimately this case will not have Uh, I shouldn't say a happy ending, but what I mean is that this injustice will not be rectified simply because, in a sense, they pulled it off. They they had a show trial, they got the result they wanted, and now the other courts are just going to kind of shrug and sign off. 
Yeah, I think you're right. There is, uh, it's a, a long battle ahead, long road ahead to, for something to happen. You had the Minnesota State Supreme Court already uh, deny Chauvin's appeal. That was based on a change of venue. Uh, his new attorney has argued that, you know, there's no reason this should have been held in, in Hennepin County where the, the riots had just happened. Also, you have a $27 million award given to George Floyd's family uh, during jury selection in Derek Chauvin's uh, trial. But then you have the U.S. Supreme Court, who also uh, said it was actually just just recently, uh, that they were not going to take take this uh, appeal either. Uh, so there are a couple more legal maneuvers. I know that, that Derek Chauvin's new attorney, Bill Mormon, is is exploring. So we'll continue to to follow um, all of that. But but absolutely, I, this is a legal fight uh, at this point. I mean, I think what you've outlined is a is a tragedy, but it's not a, not just a tragedy for Chauvin. It's a tragedy for justice. It's a it's a tragedy for the country because. Uh, you know, we, we were all raised, I mean, I know when I came to the country on a civics book idea, you know, better nine guilty men go free than one innocent man get convicted. And yet, if I were to say what your documentary is about, it's about the conviction of an innocent man. Yeah, and I think Alex King speaks to this quite a bit in the in the film too. You know, is this what are we okay with mob justice in this country? Are we going to be okay with that moving forward? And that's really what we need to examine here. Even in Alex King, you have a Minneapolis kid grows up, wants to be a Minneapolis police officer, kind of his dream. He he lands that that job and works hard for it. And he uh, on a, after his third day on the job, um, off of his field training, he's he's thrown in prison for three and a half years. He'll be a lifelong felon. Uh, after all of this, and again, are, are we okay uh, with with moving forward in, in this you know so-called uh, justice system? Wow, the film, guys, The Fall of Minneapolis. You got to see it. The website, thefallofminneapolis.com. Liz Collin, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you very much. This Christmas, there is a new film from director George Clooney. It's a rags to riches, absolute crowd pleaser, and it's based on a number one New York Times bestselling book. It's the inspirational true story about one of the most difficult sports in the world, rowing, and the 1936 University of Washington College rowing team that competed for gold at the Summer Games in Berlin. A very inspiring film. This is a team that rowed out of need, need to eat, need to sleep, and it gave them an edge that captures the power of working together to overcome all odds while rowing for America. They just don't make movies like this anymore. It's filled with wholesome content that makes it the ideal multi-generational movie for the holidays. Joel Edgerton and Callum Turner star in this exciting and incredible story of courage, hard work, and determination showcasing America at its best. Believe in each other. Believe in the impossible. The Boys in the Boat. That's the name of the movie. It opens Christmas Day in theaters only. Get tickets now. Boysintheboatmovie.com.